We'll begin this first passing example by taking player one and advancing player one to the red line. We'll now click on the coach, and because the puck is within the red circle, we can take it. We can now see that the coach takes the puck at 0.1 seconds. The coach must now wait a little bit while player one gets into position, and we do that by adding one timing point, taking that timing point, and sliding it to the right. As we slide it, you can see player one advancing to the point where player one is about two meters away from the reception point. At this point, we want to make the pass so that the puck and the player get there at the same time. When we release that, you can see the gray timing dot behind player one, what indicates where player one is at the time that coach makes this pass. We click pass and we click player one to finish the passing action. We can now take player one down into the corner and wait. Now let's take a look at the timing by going into play mode. If the timing is correct, we should see no change of speed as player one advances, takes the pass and keeps on skating. There's no change of speed, so the timing is correct. Now we'll go back into action mode and focus on player two. The first thing we'll do is click on player two and advance that first timing dot to the point where player one clears the area. So player two is going to wait 0.5 seconds and then move up in line to take a puck. So we'll move player two up to the head of the pucks, but because it's a short distance, we'll slow player two down to six kilometers an hour, and then we can take that puck. Now, player two is going to wait a little bit because we want to wait until player one is over the red line. You can see we have to create a space of time here while player two is waiting. We do that by adding two timing dots and taking that last timing dot and sliding it to the right until we see player one cross the red line. We can now advance player two. We'll have player two take a couple of strides and then pass the coach. We click pass, we click the coach, and now we're going to show you one touch passing technique. So player two is going to advance a little bit as the puck is going to the coach and then coming back until a point at right about here. And when we click the coach, we can see that that gray timing dot is not quite two meters behind player two. So let's advance player two a little bit so that timing is correct and player two will not have to slow down to get that pass. We click pass, we click player two, and now we'll finish with player two down in the corner as well. Now let's take a look at that timing. Let's focus on player two. As player one leaves, player two advances slowly, takes a puck, waits till player one gets over the red line, and then makes a give and go pass with the coach with no change of speed, so the timing is correct. Now back into action mode, we can focus on player three. Now we'll slide that first timing dot along to the point where player two starts to move up in line, and then we can move player three up into position to take the spot of player two and again slow the player down to six kilometers an hour to make it look natural because the player is going such a short distance and now we must wait till player two clears the zone so we have to create a little space of time below again with two timing dots move that last timing dot to the right where number two starts to move and now we can move number three up we'll slow number three down to six kilometers an hour and now we can take the puck. Now we must wait a little bit again because you can see where the timing dot is for player two. So we add two timing dots. We move that last timing dot to the right to the point where player two crosses the red line. And now we can start player three skating. Player three will take a couple of strides. We click pass, we click the coach. And now we're going to show you a little different passing technique where the coach is going to wait a little bit as player three goes down along the wall and cuts in at the pylon. And we want the coach to make the pass right at the pylon. So player three gets into position at exactly 11.77 seconds. The coach gets the pass at 8.72 seconds. So we must create a space of time down below in the timeline where the coach is waiting for player three to get into position. So we go up and we click timing twice. We take that last timing dot and move it to the point where number three is about two meters away from the reception point. And you can see the gray dot is in perfect position about two meters behind the player. We click pass and we click player three to finish the passing action. And we'll have three go in and stop beside players one and two. 
Now let's take a look at this in 3D to check out the timing. Both players 2 and players 3 move up slowly in line, waiting for that player ahead of them to cross the red line. You can see there's no change of speed when passing, so the timing is correct. Now let's go back into action mode and take a look at players passing the puck while moving up the ice at the same time. So we'll click on player 4, we'll take the puck, and we'll advance player 4 a little bit into the zone. We'll advance player 5 at the same time, and as you can see as we advance player 5, the gray dot moving up behind player 4, so it tells us where player 4 is at the position we're moving player 5. When the dot is directly under player 4, they're exactly there at the same time. Now if we were to make a pass, player 5 would have to slow down, so we want the pass out in front of player 5, so we must advance player 5 a little bit so that when we click on 4, we can see that the timing dot is about 2 meters behind player 5, so the timing should be correct. We click pass, and we click player 5. Now you can see the angle, like on the ice or floor, is passing ahead of 5. So now we'll advance 5 a little bit, and now we'll advance 4 to get the puck back again. So right there, the puck is under player 5, so they're even. So we'll advance 4 a little bit. So again, that gray dot is about 2 meters behind player 4. We click pass, we click player 4, and then we'll have player 4 go up and stop at the red line. And we'll have player 5 go up and stop at the red line as well. Now we go back into play mode and we check out the speed. We can see that the players are moving up the ice at the same speed and there's no speeding up or slowing down as the pucks come across and the players get to the red line exactly at the same time so the timing is correct. Now last passing example, we're going to show you how to use the dump key to make area passes. So we want a coach to make a pass out into this area right now to pick player 6 as player 6 moves along that pylon and gets in position to take a pass. So this time we're going to use a little bit different technique when taking a puck and passing it. So we won't take the puck right away. We'll advance the first timing dot of the coach to the point where 6 is getting into position to make that pass. So we'll take it and then we'll dump it at the same time. We click the ice on the player's stick, click on the X to fix the puck into position, and you can see that 6 is in position with the gray dot about 2 meters behind it. We click take, but we can see that the player is there a little bit too early, and we have to slow the player down to 3.2 seconds before they can take that puck. So we take the last timing dot, we move it to 3.2, and you can see the speed dropping in the red down to 70 kilometers an hour. Now, if we want the speed back up to 20 kilometers an hour, we just have to move that first timing point to the right, and you can see the speed going back up to 20 kilometers an hour. We can now take that puck. We'll go in and finish the action with a shot on net. We click shoot. We click the net. And now we'll have number six go behind the net and pivot backwards and get a bank pass from the coach to set up a shot from player seven coming up into the high slot. So we'll pivot backwards and we'll get six into position to take the next pass from the coach. Now we go back to the coach and the coach is going to wait a little bit after making that first dump pass. So we'll add two timing dots. We'll move the last timing dot along to the right a little bit to the, where the number six takes the puck and shoots it. And then we'll take the next puck. And then we have to wait for player six to get into position. So we'll add two more timing dots. Take that last timing dot, move it to the right to the point where player six is about three or four meters away from the reception point. We'll now click the dump key. We click the boards where the puck will make contact, and then we try to drop the puck right onto the stick of player six. Now we click on player six, and when we go up and take it, you can see that again, the players are a little too early, and we have to slow player six down to 7.6 seconds. So we take that last timing dot, we move it to 7.6, and at this point, we can take the puck. We'll just continue skating backwards a little bit, and then we'll click forward to make a pivot and head up through the circle and then make the pass into the slot for number seven. So we'll click dump and then we'll make an area pass right here in the high slot. 
Now we have to get the timing of player seven correct. So we click on player seven, that first timing dot, moving it to the right, to the point where we think player seven should skate, right around here. We can make adjustments as we go. Seven comes up around the point where seven is gonna take that pass in the high slot. You can see the take sign come up when player seven gets on it. But to see exactly what time the puck gets there, we can go into play mode. We click play, and then we grab the timing dot below, sliding it to the right, and we can see that the puck gets there at about 10.21 seconds. If you look on the left-hand side, you can see the time is 10.21. So we know that the puck gets there at 10.21 seconds. So we click on player seven. We can take that last timing dot, move it backwards to 10.21, so the player and the puck get there at exactly the same time and then we can change the speed again by adjusting that first timing dot so the player is again skating 20 kilometers an hour. We can now take the puck. Now let's make a one-time shot. So we, we click shoot, we click the net, and then we go down and open up that last black timing dot and we choose slap shot. And then we'll finish with player seven stopping beside the net. And with player six, we'll also come in and stop in a rebound position. Now let's take a look at that action in 3D to see what the timing looks like. Player six heads up along the top, gets the dump pass from the coach, scores a goal, backs up, good timing, picks up the puck on time, lifts one into the slot for a one-timer, and it's a nice goal and all the timing looks great.